Broadcom, and have they built the uh, Broad development model in the future? Broadcom, everyone's favorite company, Broadcom. They do <laughs> everything. They do everything for every company. And I mean that, you know, I say that, uh, you know, half jokingly, but they really do have their fingers in everything. And But, you know, semiconductor development um, and really kind of the custom semiconductor development is really at the core of who Broadcom is, right? I mean, they've been doing it forever. Um, and we had the opportunity through our, not hairless, but fairless leader, Pat, um, <laughs> is, and then said Broadcom's uh, investor day, we had an opportunity to kind of look at how they're working in the AI space. And uh, Will, you and I contributed to a, a piece that Patrick posted on, um, on Forbes mm -hmm. around the product, and, and I covered this product they, they call the XPU. Not a CPU, not a GPU, not an NPU, not an IPU, an XPU. And essentially what it is, <clears throat> is Broadcom builds out a, an SOC, right? A coreless SOC. So I build in my memory, I build in my IO, I build in my networking, I build in my security, and all of those pieces that make it work reliably, right? And then I go to a customer and I say, hey, I've got this thing that you can use for, say, AI inferencing. Um, what I want to know from you is, so I get you 90% of the way there. What, is it, what does that last mile look like for you as a customer to make this ideal for your environment? Because every, every hyperscaler out there has unique requirements around power, power performance, um, you know, cost. There are so many different factors that come into play when a hyperscale is deploying that if you can save, you know, 10 watts of TDP on a part, it literally adds up, or 60 watts is, is something they pointed to. It adds up when you're talking about millions of servers being deployed. You're talking mm -hmm. about substantial savings, uh, substantial um, sustainability gains, right, as you march toward a kind of a, a net uh, neutral carbon footprint or, uh, perspective. So there are all these elements that come into play that, that Qualcomm worked with the customer to understand. They go back to what they have as kind of a baseline core design and tweak that core to meet the specific needs of those customers. So, you know, in the customer's mind, it's a, it is a custom designed, um, you know, XPU for them, right? But in, yeah. but they're getting it in months time. Instead of three years from design to development, they're getting it in nine months from, you know, quote unquote, design to development because most of the work has been done. Um, I love what they're doing. I, I you know, and, and when they talked about it, the XPU in particular, they talked about they have three customers that they're serving. That adds up to about $35 billion in revenue for them. So good for them, right? Yeah. I can throw a little bit of that my way. Um, but I wonder if, <laughs> if this is a model that you can take on a, at a, on a broader scale um, to not just talk to the, hype, the major hyperscalers, but what about all of those tier two cloud providers that want to do an ARM part, right? Because it saves on cost, saves on uh, power, but really yeah. don't have the resources or those next wave cloud providers. It's a really interesting concept. I don't know how much it scales out from a customer support perspective, but it's such a unique and cool way of, of working with customers. Um, you know, I wonder if this really is going to shift how a lot of uh, semiconductor companies go to market today or tomorrow. You know, even an AMD or an Intel, right? They do custom parts for AWS, for Azure, for GCP. That's kind of what they, you know, it's, it's, it's you have to. Does this make it, yeah. do they already employ something like this? Or, you know, does this make it more profitable for them to do that and then bring it down market to all of those other cloud providers? Just an interesting, interesting um, uh, yeah. take I think they have on it. Yeah, you know, um, I wonder, Matt, so is Broadcom leveraging its scale with Merchant Silicon to, to do this with, with custom parts? What's yeah. your take on that? Well, um, I mean, they're, it, they're, I mean, it's largely Broadcom Silicon they're using, right? Uh, I think yeah. almost the whole thing is from PCIe switching to, um, to their network interfaces, to their, uh, I mean, the whole thing seems to be Broadcom from the ground up. Um, 
but they're not treating this as a merchant silicon play. Okay. Um, and that's what makes it interesting, right? But, you know, an AMD could do it and then turn around and use that leverage it down market. Paul, I mean, you're, you know, you're smarter than the two of us combined. Um, <laughs> no, you don't look it necessarily. Um, and what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, when I was wondering, instead of saying, uh, what's well, in the semiconductor portfolio, what isn't in the semiconductor portfolio? It looks like they've got everything. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you saying, is it in their semiconductor portfolio? What? Were you, were you asking if it's in their semiconductor portfolio? No, I'm just saying, I'm mean, just making a comment. They've got everything in there, it seems like. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, what what's not in there is a question. Yeah, 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 you're right. That's you're absolutely right. Yeah. And, but that's what makes them so interesting, right? I mean, when you look across what comprises an SOC, <clears throat> they have a they have a a uh, they have muscle memory, they have muscle strength, they yeah. have it all um, when it when you kind of look at all of those different elements in the fabric that brings it all together. Yeah. They have it all within their portfolio. You're right. So yeah. it. You know, they're uniquely positioned in that way for, for certain. If you look at their software portfolio, it, uh, it's pretty rich to yep. enterprise and buildings and connecting, managing. Yeah. yeah so. it's, a, cool. it, it's a cool play. I'm just I'm kind of curious as to how this plays out. If you're a, a large hyperscaler that uh, is interested in building out a custom AI chip for the consumer market, give Broadcom a call. Yeah. yeah. Tell, them Matt, tell them Matt, Paul, and Will sent you. That's right. And for our viewers, go uh, go hit Matt's handle, my handle, and Patrick's handle. We all three shared that 